<laughs> this chapter was great. Toriko was really missing uh, not having Komatsu with him to, uh, to help him cook on this one, let me tell you. And, uh, and of course, we get the BB corn. Toriko, gourmet number 59, a pop till you drop. Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the tantalizing, mouth-watering, epically stomach inducing tale of Toriko. <laughs> uh, our last chapter really saw us with, uh, uh, of course, uh, really being centered around them, you know, finding the BB corn and then actually getting the BB corn. And then it was like, hey, listen, now we got to find some place we can go cook this stuff. And, uh, and apparently going to the wool volcano is going to be the place to go. Now, the uh, chapter ended, though, with seeing a couple of uh, huge corn stalks that looked like they had been cut. And if you remember, Toriko had trouble just getting through one of them, um, you know, with, with Terry, and it took them quite some doing, and that was a smaller one. And then we saw uh, just this mysterious figure, uh, well, the outline of a figure, kind of sitting on these, these platelet-like rocks in the wool volcano. So that's where the chapter left off. This one picks up with uh, Toriko and, uh, and Terry, and Toriko's like, you know, what the hell, we should be out of the the jungle by now right then he goes and he looks and he sees like plants and trees just sprouting up out of nowhere and so literally the jungle is like expanding and changing shape and scope and everything like that while they're in it you know so it's funny because Tori goes like oh, I have no idea how we're gonna get back and find our way to where the helicopter is supposed to meet us and then Terry kind of like woofs at him you know or whatever and, and Tori goes like oh my god good job <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad you peed, because if you remember back a few chapters ago, he was like, uh, Toriko told Terry, you don't got to pee, don't worry about it, you don't got to mark your spot type of thing, and Terry did anyway. <laughs> Turns out that was a good thing. So several different times during the course of this page, I just thought it was comical the way it was uh, the way it was done, because Toriko will say something, he'll be like, I'm glad you peed. Oh, this is so good. I'm glad you peed. <laughs> you know, he's like four or five times in the in the page. So, uh, so at any rate, they wind up going and getting on to a couple pages later, we see the site they've gotten to the wool volcano. And uh, obviously it gives you the usual explanation about volcano, the molten lava that's actually under, uh, you know, is that, that flows underground is actually, you know, hotter than anything that you see on the surface. Uh, but it pretty much makes the whole area just like this sweltering sauna, right? And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm no scientist when it comes to how much people can withstand and everything else, but I do know that they, you know, it, uh, Toriko was explaining that when they had cook one of these kernels of corn, they got to start out higher up on one of the uh, one of the rocks that's you know only a few hundred degrees, <laughs> and then as the, as it goes and it gets warmer, they got to move it down um, to you know to the, the hotter rocks, eventually getting to twelve hundred degrees. And I'm thinking, damn, that's hot. Uh, <laughs> so the first several pages though are of this chapter really are Toriko trying to get the right you know the right cooking thing. We see that he's really he's a lot of brute strength. But he's not a lot of finesse um, because at one point he even says he winds up burning a couple of these things, you know, a couple of these BB corn kernels. And at one point he's just like, God, I wish I would have brought Komatsu with me. So clearly, you know, he already, you know, realizes and understands that, hey, listen, I, you know, I'm, I'm a great gourmet hunter. I never said I was a great chef. I never said I was a great preparer of food. You know, I mean, there's other people that can do that. I'm really more of a like punch something in the face and uh, and then be able to, uh, to, you know, to bring it in and, and eat it. So um, it's very kind of neat in, in my uh, opinion as far as the progression of Toriko and the character himself because uh, I don't think I've ever seen him, at least up until this point, 60 chapters in, uh, really kind of admit that he ever needed some assistance from somebody else, um, you know, or, or, or kind of uh, kind of almost be like, you know, I, I'm not as good at this as somebody else is. And you can see that that's where some of that bond from him and Komatsu comes from, you know. He's the brawn and Komatsu's like the finesse, the brains, you know. So, so anyway, after uh, a few pages and, and a few uh, a few attempted and failed uh, tries at, at cooking these BB corn kernels, finally goes and winds up getting one. Uh, actually, uses the carcass of this this molten rat or something. I think it was called devil rat, something along those lines. Uh, because it to uses like a rug underneath him and Terry as they move down on the hotter stones, so they don't just get burned up, you know. And they're sitting there, and I mean, they're sweating, <laughs> and even Terry's like. Just panting, man. Just, just sweat dripping off, and Toriko sweating, and uh, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, man, you know the BB corn pops, right? And there's just popcorn every freaking where, you know? Oh my god, it was just, and it's mouth watering just to think about it because as as Toriko goes and eats one, he's just like, oh my god, 
Oh, I, I couldn't even chew. It's so good. I just swallowed it. I'm like, oh my goodness. And he explained about how it's not, not like regular popcorn that leaves you this and that and, you know, and then the feeling in your mouth. You just, it just leaves you desiring more. And really, this is one of those foods where uh, he explained that it actually makes him hungrier as he's eating more. You know, it makes him hungrier for more. So I just thought it was cool. And as usual with the food stuff, uh, just excellent description and really kind of brings you into the world and just sort of makes you feel like, oh my goodness, I'd love some of this BB corn. You know, and uh, and and as someone here who uh, loves going to the movies, loves popcorn, um, you know, even just kind of sitting around and watching a movie at home with the family, love a bowl of popcorn. Um, man, you know, <laughs> just looking at it, going, God, I wish this stuff was real. You know, so we wind up seeing too that uh, that Terry really enjoys the popcorn, and that's really. To me, that's kind of the, the whole crux and the apex of this particular um, story arc. And from what I what I understand, it, it is a shorter one. Um, but really, it's kind of focusing on the bond between Toriko and Terry. And then as well, uh, obviously, this being something that, that is to Terry's liking, um, you know, that, that can be eaten. So, and be, can, can be enjoyed by Terry as well. Uh, because there had not been a lot of, uh, there had been a lot of sporadic not really eating and kind of picking at things prior to that over the last few months. So Toriko's obviously worried about the fella, you know, the little, uh, the, the little lady, I guess. I don't know, you know, I've heard some people say that it's a she, and I've heard some people say it's a he, I've heard some people say it's unconfirmed, you know, it doesn't really matter to me either way. Uh, it's a cool animal. That's, you know, <laughs> that's a neat sidekick, whether it's, you know, whether it's got a dick dangling or not. Doesn't really matter much to me, uh, mainly because there, he, he, there's no speaking parts on he or she or it, you know. So, uh, but really, what winds up happening though is after they enjoy and kind of revel in this wonderful popcorn, this BB corn for quite some time, then all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, the chapter goes and starts to wrap up here with these last couple of pages. You just see, and this kind of was like, I was like, what the hell's going on, you know? So they're sitting up there, they're. You know, he's eating and everything else. And all of a sudden, Toriko's like, what the hell? And he kind of turns around. And he sees this weird dude with forearms and these tattoos all over his face. This giant, just imposing looking figure standing behind him. He's got this giant freaking straw, it looks like. And he's sucking up all the BB corn in the area. And then he goes and he burps and he says, hey, uh, here we go. He goes, Mind if I suck up uh, that pooch of yours next? <laughs> and then you see Terry go flying through. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly, to me, this was the shadowy figure from the last chapter that we saw. I have no idea what type of antagonist this is. Uh, clearly, it's not somebody that we're going to wind up being friends with, uh, at, least, at least from what I can see from the early going, but just jumps in there and has got this giant straw and just like, <laughs> oh yeah, thanks for that BB corn. And by the way, you mind if I suck up your uh, <laughs> your, your little dog too there, your wolf? Uh, so that, that's how the chapter ended. I can't wait to jump into the next one over here to see, you know, what the hell happens, who this character is, um, and, and hopefully, uh, you know, he'll be introduced formally in the next chapter. So uh, definitely a very cool chapter. My, uh, my chapter question, though, is for you folks is you know what are your thoughts on just kind of the uh the, i guess i guess you would say the camaraderie the uh the, the bond that's being built between terry and toriko at this point um i did think it was personally i thought it was profound in the chapter that toriko went and kind of um you know said oh boy i wish i would have brought kamatsu with me for the cooking things um but i really like over the last couple of chapters how the relationship between toriko and terry is developing and the bond is becoming that much stronger and laying the groundwork hopefully for this you know uh, terry being a kind of a sidekick for you know the rest of the series or at least a good portion of the series so let me know what your thoughts are on that in the comments down below feel free to hit the thumbs up the like button if you should think that i deserve it and subscribe if you haven't done so already we will look forward to catching all of you in the next one nation so here is a nice picture of the fire fist ace go on over and follow me on facebook and twitter too